Hello and welcome back to the 2019 Mercedes-Benz Virtual GP season. We're back for the VGP1 race at Silverstone after a chaotic and crazy race for the VGP2 division last time out. My name is Justin Sutton and joining me once again, it's Chris Buxton. Yep, it's uh, Silverstone once again. That's going to be a difficult race to top. It was uh, all kinds of chaotic, but some great overtaking and some great racing going on uh, when people weren't overcooking their tyres. So the VGP1 standings in Michael's middle, of course, with a comfortable lead up front, but not insurmountable. There's uh, being chased, as he has been all season long, by Stefanko Palesny 3, Balazic 4, Halabitz 5, Sigurd 6, Frabis 7, Kazany Gake, Trichardo 9, and Kostelik rounding out the top 10. Acer with a pretty sizable lead up front, ahead of Logitech. Uh, then Benzina still hotly contesting the Logitech, Logitech team. Then Predator, Smarty, RPS, Thrustmaster, Forza, Lenovo Legion and Sport rounding out the top 10. So Smidl will be crowned champion once again if he wins both races and says the fastest lap as Stefanko is third or worse, so he has to dominate essentially, wins both races as Stefanko finishes third and fourth or worse, finishes first and second and Stefanko is fifth or worse, and finishes second in both races and Stefanko is seventh or worse. So you know, no pressure you could argue, but he still has got to put in the smiddle like performances and he has not won both races yet. Uh, that is something to bear in mind. Let's just remind ourselves what this Silverstone circuit is like. It is 18 corners, just shy of six kilometers long. And it is uh, the exact same conditions, actually, as the VGP2 race. 18 degrees air temperature, 22 degrees track temperature. Last time out, driver of the day in the VGP1 category was Martin Stefanko in the Benzina car. It is Michael <laughs> Schmidl who takes pole position with a 125.4. Uh, nearly four tenths of a second quicker than Pelesny. Then it's Lucas Pachada. The Pachada brothers actually have been doing very mm. well at Silverstone. Kazanik in fourth position, Blazek in fifth, and where is Stefanko? He's way down in seventh wow. position. That is not an ideal starting position for him, is it, Chris? Nope, but it's all on Smiddle to dominate the race nonetheless. He has to take both wins if he wants the title now. But the lights are on. It is time to wind them up and let them go. It's a 20-minute race plus one lap, as you can see. Will Smiddle get the clean break? Will Polesny challenge him into the first few turns? And, of course, Smiddle doing Smiddle things and gets a very clean start. And that is Blazek on the outside of the Thrustmaster car. Oh, nearly three wide. We saw that yesterday fairly unsuccessfully uh, admittedly into a tree yesterday but we will see how well these guys do there is uh, Lucas Pratado demoted to fourth Blanche gets that position he's going for second my goodness he's uh, already having a crack at the ace car almost turns into the side of him coming into Brooklyn that cannot quite hang on to the inside line of course as they're all fighting Smiddle is just running away nearly one and a half seconds to the good already but what a spirited start from Michael Blanchek yeah, that was incredible stuff. Nearly grabbing second position, as you pointed out. And I have a feeling he's going to be, be feeling pretty confident about taking that second place position. As uh, Lucas Pachada does go a bit wide coming out of cops. It doesn't look like it's going to lose him many positions. Kazanik not quite close enough to capitalize that. And interestingly enough, Martin Stefanko, as uh, again, the, the director is working very well with <laughs> me here. Uh, Martin Stefanko has actually slipped to eighth position. That's not a great start for him, but here we go. He's going to be three wide into stow nearly as he tries to go around the outside of Kazanik in the Logitech car. That will give him the inside line down into Vale if he could be late enough on the brakes that could move him back up into seventh position. And it looks like that is indeed going to work out in the favor of the Benzina driver Martin Stefanko as he tries to keep this championship alive. At the very least, I imagine he wants this go to go down to the fall. Oh, God! Thomas Prohaska is really keen on getting close to that Logitech car. It almost like it looked like he wanted oh. to give him a kiss. Oh, that's the RPS oh car goodness. Seeker off. Oh, and there's contact. Uh, I did say that Prohaska really wanted to touch the back of that Logitech car, <laughs> and clearly I was right. Oh, the, uh, that's the RPS car that's uh, had all kinds of trouble. Jan Seeker uh, you know, through Village, miles off the road there, and has rejoined in the middle of Village, and now on board with Seeker as he's having a look on the inside of Brooklyn, trying to get that position from the sport car, Thomas Mahaska, uh, as you said, uh, you know, getting up close and personal with Kaznick, oh, bit of a twitch coming through, Luffin and the sport car comes back up into that ninth position, uh, you know, well defended, but here we go again, is Yanzigra going to go for the inside of Cobbs, it's brave, it's bold, it's, it's done, 
Wow, great driving from both of them. And uh, a drive through penalty for Thomas Van Husker. Well, yeah, it was fairly inevitable, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. He uh, nudged the back of Kazelnik uh, hard enough to send him into a spin. Kazelnik now a couple of seconds down the road from uh, everybody else. But lovely uh, manoeuvres then from the RPS and Sport Cars, respectively. There's uh, Lucas Pichada for Thrustmaster. It, as he said earlier, Justin, the Thrustmaster team getting very well represented from the Pichada brothers in VTP1 and VTP2. Pelesny now getting into a strike, and Prohaska serving his penalty straight away. Smiddle, well, that's not a surprise, is it? Getting the uh, fastest lap now, nearly three seconds in the lead, and only two laps gone. Yeah, impressive stuff. Uh, I mean, well, it, I mean, is it impressive? It's sort of like what we're used to from Schmidl at this point. <laughs> so uh, it's not impressive for Schmidl, but it's it's impressive by literally any other standards whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, as we say, Schmidl doing Schmidl things. But uh, Michael Blazek is the one that really was on the move in the opening laps. He's gotten himself up to third position, but it seems he's kind of dropped off the back of Pelesny. So uh, seemingly having the better race craft, but not quite having that overall pace to challenge that Acer car as Pelesny pulls a bit of a gap. But meanwhile, Bushek and Kostulik, the Smarty and Forza cars battling it out very close to one another as they make their way out of Love Field. And unfortunately for Perhaska, this isn't one of the races of the season where you can actually blame lag for that incident because, of course, they are all in the studio. I imagine we'll be getting some shots of them in the studio over the course of the race so that we can see just how intense their faces are as they uh, do battle with one another through this sprint race. And there is Michael Schmidl, the man off in the distance running the loneliest of races as it stands right now. Uh, nobody's slow enough to, to be catching. I, you know, I would expect nobody's going to be lapped, probably. With how competitive VGP1 has become in 2019, this, this 2019 Mercedes-Benz VGP 2019 season has been incredible. It's been, I think it's been the closest we've seen uh, of all time as far as the entire field, you know, from first down to last. Of course, we did have uh, 2017 with Schmidl and Stefanko and all that kind of stuff. However, from first all the way down to last, I think this is the tightest VGP field we've ever had. So I do not expect Schmidl will be lapping anybody unless there's some major incidents, uh, which could potentially still happen after what we saw in the VGP2 category. Um, and we did get word, actually, after the VGP2 race that apparently the drivers were just struggling with tire temperatures, either too cold, too hot. Uh, so apparently this Silverstone track just throwing up all kinds of surprises for these drivers. So it would seem, oh crikey, Bushek getting very close in the smarty car. He's uh, standing in for Andre Kleber's wall. Oh my goodness, turning left into a right-hander doesn't tend to go well. But he hung on to that one very, very well. As uh, Bushek still chasing off after Costa in the Forza car. Stefenko up to sixth now with the uh, various adventures of uh, Kazani Kasnikara and Prohaska now behind him. Because Prohaska having said that drive penalty is a long way off the back. There's Jan Frabisch in the Avast car. There's the field now settling into their rhythms a little bit, but as happy as you say, Justin, that means absolutely squat considering how quickly it can change. Uh, you know, even the best making the mistakes we saw in the VTP1 race yesterday. So we will see how well our guys deal with it. There is Martin Stavenko doing what he can to close in on Frabish. Last time around, he was a couple of, you know, two and a half tenths faster. Then the Avascar, we'll see what the lap times come in with this time for the Avascar 128.7, 21. Wow, so uh, Stavenko gaining six tenths of a second near enough on that last lap. So Stavenko now really getting into his stride after a poor qualifying has put him right the way down the order. And that's really going to hurt his uh, championship, to, uh, you know, hanging on to the championship potential. But you know, we never know. We might see some middle in the barrier as yet. It's just too... Uh, if yesterday's race, if the VGB1, uh, VGB2 race rather, was a little bit more predictable, you could easily assume that uh, that's it, you know, job done, championship over, smiddle has got it. But you cannot predict anything from what we saw in the VGB2s. No, no, yeah, exactly right. And uh, I mean, some of the best drivers in VGP2 were actually struggling quite a bit. So certainly anything can happen. And uh, based on, as you say, based on what we saw previously, certainly <laughs> I'm expecting a little bit of chaos, if not in this shorter sprint race, then certainly in the feature race. But one of the drivers that I do expect to have either zero issues or not very many issues is going to be Martin Stefanko. Of course, he is one of the more talented drivers out there and, and one of those guys that just puts in quite a bit of work. Probably not putting in 
as much practice as he would like for the VGP because, of course, he has been retained for the 2019 F1 esports season with the Haas F1 team. So, um, you know, he's, he's kind of having split duties. He's having to try and keep up with the F1 esports and also keep up with Michael Schmidl, which is no small feat. That is something that's very difficult to try and manage. So, uh, and with, uh, with the F1 esports going on as well for Martin Stefanko, I imagine it's just doubly hard for him. And, and I think maybe that's what we're seeing with his poor qualifying position to, in today's sprint race. But uh, I wonder, because of course it is, there, there is uh, the, the grid shuffle after the sprint race for the feature race, and I wonder if maybe that's playing in Stefanko's mind. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not so sure about that, but we'll find out. We, uh, it's only uh, 12 minutes plus one lap until we get to the end of this very short sprint race, but Stefanko is keeping up to the back of Jan Frabisch rather well at the moment, but we haven't really seen him going for any moves or anything like that just yet. Uh, we did see a very successful outing for the Avascar in the BGP2 category, as well, so I wonder if uh, Ian Frabish is just kind of looking to carry that momentum for a vast in the VGP ones. Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's a great way to prove a, prove a worth is the RPS car side by side with uh, that'll be who's he side by side with? That's Bushek, he's uh, side by side with, so uh, that's pretty brave uh, down there at Cops, but it can be done, it can be done successfully as you've just seen. Stefanko still hounding the back of Frabish as they come into Stowe. And this is someone you don't really want to have pressure. Well, I don't know that anyone ever wants pressure put on them, but you know, it's it's one of these things. That if you make a mistake there, you're off the road. You make a mistake here through Vale in club, it's not really that much of an issue. But you do it at Stowe, and you've generally gone a very long way off road. So decent effort there from Fabrice. Another bit of a lap time, but not even a tenth apart this time. So Stefanko, either just biding his time, maybe made a small mistake. I wouldn't think he's. Hitting the dirty air that badly, but it could be. I mean, if he's that close through Magnus and Beckett, that is going to hurt. It's, it's very hard to follow a car that close when you really need the downforce. And you'll just get all that dirty air and the, the, the tires just won't stick. Uh, the car won't stick as anywhere near as well as it should. They come through Brooklyn, out into Luffield. And just, you can just see the focus on uh, Stefanko's face in the bottom right. <laughs> it almost looks like Jan Fram is just like, yeah. It's fine. It, it looks it almost looks really relaxed. Yeah. Uh, whereas you know you've just got that steely face on Stefanko. Oh, he really had to back off there. He caught the Avasca at a slightly awkward moment, so he's lost an awful lot of time. Or he's uh, intentionally backed off so he doesn't get so much of that dirty air. He wants a decent exit here, coming through Chapel, but he's a little bit too far back to make an, an attack into Stoke. So you know. Stefanko still putting the pressure on. He might be playing the, uh, you know, playing the reverse grid game so he can, you know, start on pole and then runs off. It's a, it's a, a risky strategy, mm -hmm. but you know, when when all else fails, then you know, why not? You, you see the contra strategy work from time to time for those, you know, in a lower position. Then you know, he, he might well play that one. Yes, yeah, certainly possible. I mean, you can only imagine what's going through uh, Martin Stefanko's head, and I imagine there's quite a bit actually going through Martin Stefanko's head because he's got a lot to think about in this race and in this championship and uh, in the 2019 uh, season for VGP as they make their way through once again. But this is something we saw actually in the VGP2 category in the race. We saw uh, faster drivers keep uh, not able to make overtakes. Now, is Martin Stefanko about to make me look like a fool? He goes up the inside <laughs> into Brooklyn's, uh, but actually very, very nice defending from oh. Fravish there. He goes a bit wide at the exit of Brooklyn's before Luffield, and that's going to just give Martin Stefanko that little bit of an edge around the outside at Luffield is one of my favorite overtakes to go around the outside of, at Luffield. That is not easy. It is actually more than 180 degrees, that corner, so it just kind of goes on and on and on. You're just holding that wheel to the right for what feels like forever, uh, but he did indeed go around the outside. He, pu he put that pressure on the Avascar of Jan Fravish, uh, forced him to go just that little bit wide at the exit of Brooklyn's, which gave him the edge going around the outside of Love of Luffield. Uh, it looks calculated from Martin Stefanko, but then again, what overtake from Martin Stefanko doesn't look calculated? Very true. Very, very true indeed. Uh, he knew exactly how he was going to make that particular move. Here's Kazanik on Kostelik for seventh position. Ooh, bit of a lockup from the Logitech car. They're not going to be doing pit stops. Uh, well, they won't be planning to do pit stops in this race. It'll drop them way out of contention if they do. So Kazanik needs to look after these tyres to get them to the end. Let's uh, we'll see how he does. Last laps, three tenths to Kazanik's favour. So he's got the pace over the Forza car. 
no move as yet. A little bit impatient on the gas as he had to turn left into a right-hander. Now we'll see what he wants to do. Oh, he's again a little too impatient on the gas. That's a compromise his exit through onto the Wellington straight. He's way too far back. I mean, you compare how the Stefanko did the move. Oh, that's a bit deep, though, for the Forza car into Brooklyn. So, the, oh, and that's a big old twitch for Kazanik. That won't have gone well coming through left field. Oh, well, that tail's lively. He's uh, he's riding a bucking bronco there by the look of this. But uh, he's doing well to hang on to it, but he is really hurting his charge after Kostelik. Yeah, no doubt about that. You're, you're exactly right. But this is, uh, oh, it's, <laughs> he's just, uh, adjusting his seat a little bit. Never something you want to be doing at uh, nearly 200 miles per hour. But uh, <laughs> he does manage to uh, to keep everything pointing in the right direction. Uh, we're already more than halfway through this sprint race. Just under seven minutes plus one lap still remaining in this VGP1 sprint race from Silverstone. And uh, it, it hasn't been as chaotic certainly as VGP2. I'd say it's a it's been a bit more competitive though. Um, Thomas Prohaska actually has not given up in 11th position after having that drive-through penalty True. so uh, great to see that he is still pushing hard in 11th position. Everybody did opt, this, this is something we didn't talk about already, but everybody did opt, opt for the soft compound tires similar in the uh, VGP2 category so uh, it seems uh, that really it just is the tire of choice if you need to do 20 minutes plus one lap of racing around Silverstone. Uh, Schmidl continues to extend his lead up at the front. It's around about seven seconds there about. Uh, Pelesny continues to extend the gap down to Blazek as well. Seemingly just again having that better one lap pace compared to the Legion car behind. Lucas Pichotta is just about keeping within touching distance of Blazek. He's sort of keeping him honest really is the uh, the nice way of saying that. Uh, Shevchenko ever since moving up into fifth position does have about a four four and a half second gap to Pachata in fourth position we'll see if he's going to be able to close that down but with less than six minutes remaining in this race I'm not entirely confident of Stefanko being able to gain more positions because again as I said before this is probably the closest uh, VGP grid we've ever had from top to bottom so you know that that kind of pace um, advantage that Stefanko and Schmidl had in previous seasons really seems to be slowly but surely being chipped away. Schmidl clearly the faster driver. Oh, that's a that's a bit of a brave one for Kazanik. It's not the exit that you really want coming out of Chapel and onto the hangar straight. So that's going to put him uh, just sort of on the back foot. Not really going to be able to uh, challenge Kostelik in that Forza car up ahead. Uh, but yeah, we're we're just seeing everybody's kind of more on pace uh, so you know I, I don't expect to see Stefanko charge through the field as we may have done in previous years no you're right uh, you know, there, there isn't such a big difference car to car driver mm -hmm. to driver mm -hmm. I saying, no, car to car they're all identical but you know, with the exception of the setups that they individually use but yeah there, there's, as each season has progressed the talent has, has, has just gotten better and better we've seen you know, drivers in previous seasons that were last and lapped now really challenging for solid points you know race after race so it, it's great to see how well these drivers develop also whilst we still are looking at the battle for seventh position between Kostelik and Kazanik Sikora has been uh, looming in the background and again the Logitech cars are very close so twitchy that car it's so incredibly loose how on earth is he keeping it at all and another twitch from Kazanik I mean he's almost having to fight the thing on the straights it's unbelievable oh now we're seeing a defensive move on the inside of cops so oh no and so sooner do i comment on how difficult that car it looks like to handle and it's off into the wall for kazanig that is going to be the end of his race he'll uh, be able to carry on for now but that is uh, pretty much spell the end of a uh, solid result that's given a position to secret and he's straight on costadi's case yeah, exactly right. Uh, I think that's uh, that's going to be an interesting one. The Lynx driver getting very, very close to the back of the Forza car. So I would say uh, certainly a potential battle that we have on our hands. Uh, Lucas Pachata, meanwhile, has dropped off the back of Michael Blazek, and Michael Blazek has closed up, closed up to the back of Pelesny mm. in that Acer car. So uh, we were looking at a potential battle for third position. It didn't seem like Lucas was straight on or straight onto the back of him or anything like that. Uh, however, Blazek closing up to Pelesny could be uh, an indication for him. Oh, and Kaznick is into the pits, which is great news if you're the Spurt team or if you're Thomas Prochaska yeah. as he moves himself up into a points-paying position of 10th. However, Sikora on the back of Kostelik. Now, I have to say, Sikora 
uh, hasn't had the best of races, but he does seem rather quick around Silverstone, so uh, certainly I think he could be applying some serious pe pressure to Kostulik here in the closing few laps that we have remaining in this sprint race, and we are very, very close to the end already. It's absolutely flown by, uh, and then of course we will have the feature race coming up after this, but Sikora looking very strong, looking very comfortable overall, uh, uh, generally, with this Silverstone circuit, which, I mean, a lot of drivers have not seemed comfortable with this circuit whatsoever <laughs> uh, across uh, both categories, VGP2 and VGP1. So uh, we'll see if he's any, able to make anything happen here on Kostulik, uh, who has uh, really been having a fantastic season, has Martin Kostulik. Uh, again, I, I still think back, and I, I know that this is maybe unfair to Kostulik, or maybe he likes that I think back to this, but I still remember remember when he was a back marker getting lapped and stuff like that and you know now look at him he's got incredible pace in 2019 he's a serious contender which is always fantastic to see uh and it's uh, uh great to see Kostulik uh coming under attack from Seeker here last lap was a 29.5 and similarly a 29.5 for Seeker as well so yeah uh very similar lap times between these two which because Kostulik has the uh the track position at the moment I would say uh with just a couple of laps two or three laps remaining for these guys, I'd say definitely advantage to the Forza car as it stands right now. Well, we'll see. I reckon the RPS car's got the pace to nail him because Kostelik has missed quite a few apexes uh, you know, at crucial times, but you know, uh, as we've already said, overtaking is very difficult for these guys because of how close they are in relative pace. Uh, no one's told Michael Smith all that today, it would seem, but you know, he's off into the distance doing his own thing. So we'll see what the RPS car can do against the Forza car coming into Cops once again. Oh, and again, that's proven such a... Yeah, I think, again, we're seeing tyre trouble here as it looked like you know, a lot of people are struggling to keep their cars under control coming through Cops. Oh, again, it doesn't look like the uh, RPS car wants to behave itself. Out of Chapel, he's too far back to, to realistically make a move into stay. Well, reminders of who our leader actually is. It is Michael Smith. Uh, he, that's nice to give him a little bit of air time just to remind <laughs> us that he's actually still with us and again just the, the, the few little twitches where the cars is getting a little bit unsettled again time management proving an issue for our VGB1 drivers as well it would seem and Seeker could well well he's, again he's able to wheel cost of again just not find a way past but you know two laps to go I would say 30 seconds before the checkered flag will fall uh, we briefly saw actually the, the, the shot was so brief when Michael Smith allowed it didn't actually see where he was on track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. So uh, we'll see. Could be uh, two, maybe three. I would imagine it's two laps left. And again there, we'll see what a great exit. Again for Costley. He's getting the pace where he needs it to keep Seagull behind. Uh, Seagull will reel him in. And Costley just then deploying all of his horses at the right time to keep the up air's car behind him. That's right, there's two primary overtaking locations at Silverstone, which is into Brooklyn's, which we just went through, and then there's into Stowe at the end of the hangar straight. So, uh, yeah, I mean, really, he's got three more opportunities to make the overtake as the white flag is out, as the timer has run down. So, Seeker has got one more oppor or two more opportunities into Stowe, one more opportunity in Brooklyn's, as both of them go very wide coming out of Cops, which doesn't actually gain you time you lose a little bit of time by running that wide outside of cops so really neither of these guys gaining an advantage through all of that through the s curves though however i have to say secret looking like the faster of the two cars is he going to be close enough to actually mount an attack into still he's not quite he's going to have to be very late on the brakes but kostulik was also pretty late on the brakes does manage to get uh he actually left him the space just in just in case Sikora was thinking about going up the uh, inside into stone again Kostelik is being very very respectful here giving space to a car that isn't actually alongside him yet so either that or he's just being thrown off by the rps car but here we go final lap for them Kostelik defends the inside line into the high speed right hander he's going to maintain that position for the meantime but again two more opportunities here for Sikora let's see if he can make either of them work for him Seekers always having a look on the inside of Aintree. We saw that work well. Uh, sorry, inside of the loop. We saw that work well and not so well in the VGB1 race, but uh, it hasn't paid off for Seeker just yet. He may well have to concede and stay behind Kostelik. He looked quite keen on making the move into Vale. Um, that you can do it in Vale as long as you get a good exit from Stowe. Staying right with the Forza cars, they come out of Luffield for the final time. Now through Woodcut. Heading down towards Cops. We've seen overtakes happen there. And there is Smiddle. Once again, untouchable up front in the Predator car. 
I say a predator, he hasn't had any prey to be a predator over because he's just <laughs> run off into the distance. But your winner for the sprint race here in Silverstone is once again Michael Smiddle. Very nicely done by uh, you know, quite some considerable distance over the ace car of Polesny. This battle for seventh still raging on for uh, Secret and Costa League now through. Uh, through Stowe they come. He's, it's going to be a big lunge into Vale if he's going to do. He's too far back. It does look like he's at his Justin just in the Forza car. Is just about able to hold him off. Polesny is going to come across the line in second. Stefanko five. Frabish sixth. Costa did indeed hold on to seventh. Seeker eight. And there is Buschek and the Smarty car rounding out the, the uh, finishing positions. So there it is confirmed then. Uh, Michael Smiddle on the top. Is it any wonder that particular combination, Michael Smith and Winner, we've seen quite a few times. <laughs> and yeah, and fastest laps are just shy of 10 seconds gap between himself and Palesny. Um, Blatic 3, Pachada 4, Stefango 5, Fabius 6, Costa Elite 7, Secret 8, Bushik 9, and Thomas Prohaska running out the top 10 from uh, Kazanik's unfortunate uh, you know, incident we saw. Wow, less than three seconds between second and fourth. Actually, they, they really tightened up right at the end there. They didn't actually battle each other, but they did get very tight, uh, very close to one another. And there is Martin Stefanko starting from the front row of the grid. I imagine he is going to be very keen to get past Jan Frabish as quickly as he can and start to build that gap as Michael Schmidl starts from seventh position as the lights go out. And was that a jump start, actually, for Sikra in the, in the uh, RPS wow. car? I think it may have been. He, he's immediately shot up into second position. And it looks like, oh, that's Blazek going spinning around in the Legion car. Stefanko's lost a lot oh of positions. Oh my goodness. That's the uh, Forza car as well and the, the Smarty car, car the uh, both car. off the don't track add, as well. And we've got the full add. course yellow is out already. And Michael Schmidl is in third or fourth. Uh, we'll wait to see. Yeah, it looks like, uh, no, he's actually back down into fifth. So, uh, but immediately onto the back of Martin Stefanko, which is going to be so frustrating for Stefanko. Uh, Sikora, yeah, we, that was a jump start indeed, so he'll have a drive-through penalty. Well spotted there. Jan yeah, Sikora getting a little bit too trigger-happy uh, for dropping the clutch, but it's Jan Frabish is uh, maintaining the top spot. Sikora up to second. Pichardo 3, a terrible start for Stefanko. He's now down to fourth once again. Smiddle seemingly getting the lion's share of the luck in the start of the uh, feature race. Hasn't always gone like that, but he does seem to have had a huge dose of good fortune. He's found himself in fifth position. Polesny in sixth. Prohaska seven. Kazany gate. Blazik nine. Kostadi ten. And Buschek in the smart car at the tail of the field. So now the field will complete the lap until everybody is sorted. Anyone that is going to go for the pits will have the opportunity to do so. The field will be reformed. Doesn't look like anyone... Uh, well, we'll see when we get round to the pit lane. Everybody just weaving away. And uh, doesn't that interesting secret isn't? Is he looking to come into the pits? I wonder. There'll be. I wonder well, why he's got he's the, not weaving. He's got the penalty. Oh, good point. Yes. So there he goes. And uh, oh, there we go. There's the as a reminder of the um, yeah as a result of the results from the sprint race you've seen there the uh, iterations for Smiddle to become champion. And there's the uh, drive-through penalty being served from the RPS car. That was a shame. He did such a you know, strong result and great uh, racing in the sprint race. That will be very disheartening. But he will be able to join the back of the field as uh, Sikora, Kazanik, Prohaska and Blazek all coming in. They were all involved in that very big incident down here at the loop last time around. So they'll be allowed to rejoin the back of the field. And then we will be racing once again when the full course yellow is released. Yep, exactly right. That's uh, promoted a few people. So uh, Stefanko's up into third, Smittle's up into fourth after. Uh, so actually, that ended up not being such a bad penalty for Seeker. He kind of got lucky there that the full course yellow got deployed because uh, essentially he's just losing uh, positions rather than time and positions because uh, he, he would have been down to last if not for the full course yellow. And he would have been, you know, what, 10, 15 seconds behind uh, whoever is in 10th position. So uh, it's actually worked out sort of well for Sikora as a result of that. But of course, he didn't want to jump. The, you know, he wasn't like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll jump the start and then there will be a full course <laughs> yellow and then I'll, I'll be in eighth position. No, no, he's not. He's he's not a uh, Nostradamus. He couldn't have figured that one out. Um, <laughs> uh, I do think worth pointing out, though, uh, Kostelik is on the mediums, Bushek's on the mediums and Thomas Prohaska has come out of the pits on the hearts. 
That's an unusual one. We did see a few people trying the mediums with you know, a varying degree of success uh, yesterday in the VTB1 race, but uh, sorry, VTB2 race. But yeah, you know, the hard tyres can't see them working well. Uh, hey, what do I know? I haven't practiced on them. So we'll see what uh, Thomas Rahasko is able to do. Uh, we've seen the mediums last the feature race distances, so yeah, we will see. The hard tyres will certainly do the distance. The mediums will be a bit, bit stretched. As the full course yellow then about to be released, Fabish is going to have a lot of company then. And look at Smiddle, really nailed to the back of Stavenga. Stavenga is not that close to the back of uh, Pichada, strangely, but uh, Pichada in the thrust must guard really raring to go. go, go and go, away go. we go then. Who is going to get the drop on those ahead of them? It does look like Pichada's had a pretty decent start. He's been run very wide as they come through Abbey into farm the top four. Not even half a second apart. There is Polesny in the AC car. And there goes Smiddle trying to get the inside of the loop. Can Stefanko run, run it around the outside? No. No, I think Stefanko knew that one was done. So up into third then for the championship nominee of, Stif of a Smiddle. Stefanko's not willing to let it go. He's not really going to get make a move on the outside. Oops, and that's a bit of wheel banging going on there. It's Kazanik and the Logitech car losing out as a result of the restart. And through we go. Looks like everybody has survived so far but you know with the tire issues that people have been having anything could happen yeah exactly right and uh it seems that the medium runners are struggling a little bit bushek dropping down to 10th position prohaska dropping down to 11th position and actually kostok as well now dropping down into eighth so kazanik actually the only soft runner outside of the top seven as it stands right now uh but yeah it is all about michael schmidl gaining that position on Martin Stefanko really just seems to have the pace over everybody here at Silverstone today. No surprises there, let's be honest, as uh, he actually just shoots right around the outside of Lucas Pachada at Stowe. I mean, it, it looked like the Thrustmaster car was standing still. That was fairly dominant, the way that he took that wow. position. Moves himself up into second. And uh, at the moment, I believe, given the positions that they're in, oh, and actually Pelesny has overtaken Stefanko. Uh, it's not showing on the timing screen just yet, but that Acer car is very clearly ahead of the Benzina car as they start yet another lap. As uh, Schmidl gets very close to the back, oh, he tries the over-under, and he gets uh, gets the undercut on the Avast car. He's going to be to the outside now on Jan Frabisch, who has to leave him the room. Lucas Pachata right behind as well, looking to possibly capitalize on this side-by-side -side battle between the two of them and see if he can make an overtake on the Avast car, move himself up into second position, potentially looks to the inside at, at uh, Brooklyn's, but can't quite get alongside. And Michael Schmidl into the lead of the the race and already with a couple of car lengths between himself and Jan Frabish. So uh, it is looking like if things continue as they are, still 35 minutes plus a lap still to go in this race, but it's looking good for Michael Schmidl to be crowned champion here today. It is looking good for Blasek still hanging on to the side of the RPS car that's outside of Wicked and of Cox runs a little bit wide. Can he get the move done? We're seeing side by side further up the road. There's Palesny and the Benzini car of I think. Having a fight, we saw in the shot. Ooh, Blasek get the car settled down. Ooh, the RPS car then deep into Chapel because they've been fighting all the way up to that point. There's Lucas Machado that is now in fourth. And goodness me, Smiddle certainly knows something that the rest of them don't. When then did Pelesny do that? Uh, but, well, Pelesny got ahead of Stefanko, and then I think Pachado has uh, had an issue somewhere. I, I generally don't know. <laughs> so I think either Pelesny is suddenly on fire, maybe he's, uh, maybe he's uh, trading tips with Smiddle. Uh, or it's, uh, yeah, Lucas Machado has made a mistake somewhere that's given the ace car third spot. Uh, I, I stand correctly. I did say that Smiddle hasn't won both feature and sprint race. He did, but I, he was penalised. I believe it was Macau. He won both the feature and sprint race, but was penalised right. in the feature race, which dropped him out of that top spot. So he has done it. He looks set to do it. Here comes Blasek then on the RPS car. Jan Secret going to the uh, middle of the road, trying to defend the inside line. Can the leading car over all the RPS cars? They come into Brooklands. Oh, nicely driven. Give it on the road. As a secret hangs on to the side of the leading car. No, that position is Blasek. Wow. Very nicely done. That is a heck of an overtake from Michael Blazek. Really impressive stuff around the outside at Brooklands, which is often time oftentimes the line that you want to take because it gives you that inside line. I, I mentioned just earlier actually how difficult it is to go around the outside of Luffield. So a lot of times you want to be to the outside of Brooklyn's. As long as you're still side by side as you come out of Brooklyn's, then you're going to have the advantage going into Luffield. And Blazek uh, did a fantastic job. He actually had the advantage even before they got into Luffield. He was already ahead, so fantastic stuff. But Pelesny, so 
so far has to be my driver of the day. I mean, this has been an incredible drive for the Acer driver. I mean, Schmittle's obviously doing what he does best, but uh, Pelesny moving himself up into third position. Fantastic drive for him for, uh, so far. Stefanko looking to grab fourth position off of Lucas Pachata. I think he probably knows that the championship is done at this point, but Stefanko is a racer through and through. Whether or not the championship is over with is completely irrelevant to somebody like him. He sees Lucas Pachata ahead. He, oh, actually, let's focus even further up the road as the Acer car goes side by side with Jan Frabish as they get into the braking zone for, uh, for uh, that was Village, but couldn't quite grab the position. But uh, Stefanko looking to make a move on Pachata and Pelesny looking to make a move on Frabish. And actually, Blazek isn't that far behind Stefanko now. Look at that. Wow, Pelesny and Blazek are absolutely alive in this feature race. So a little bit deep coming into Brooklands for the Acer car. You don't lose a tiny bit of time on the Avast car, but nothing too drastic. Oh, that's deep for Stefanko. This is going to put him in the clusters of Blazek. Seeker is not that far behind them either. Uh, well, in fairness, neither is Kostelik and Kasanik. The entire field, with the exception of uh, Smittle, are not that far apart. As Blazek is very deep once again. You know, people go into the you know, it's escape route. Uh, Woodcut, oh, Blazek's had to back out of that coming into Maggots and Beckett. He doesn't want to run, run in the back of the Benzina car. Out through Chapel, who's going to be uh, making the move? Doesn't look like anybody is close enough to make a move into Stowe this time around. But once again, we talk about pressure management. And uh, at the moment, all the pressure is on Frabish as uh, he leaves this particular train, although leaves it by about seven tenths over Pelesny. Richard looks like he's uh, going to make a move or shaping up to make a move on the Acer car. What an incredible series of events. But again, those tyres, as we've seen, have a habit of letting go at the most inopportune times. And that could completely shake this field up again. Exactly right. Yeah, I I'm surprised we actually haven't seen more incidents so far in this VGP1 feature race. It's been uh, really exciting, actually, to see how close everybody is. I mean, we've already had mm. so much racing. And the biggest gap outside of uh, outside of Smittle and Frabish at the moment is Kostulik to Sikora. And honestly, Kostulik's on the mediums and only a couple of seconds back. So, I mean, he could be a dark horse possibly for a top five finish potentially. It really depends on how he utilizes those mediums as the soft tires of the front runners start to die off and a uh, after he switches onto the soft tires and in the second half of the race and how he utilizes those. Because, of course, we did see the Contra strategy in the VGP2 category and it didn't quite work out. I don't remember which driver that was as Blazek goes a bit for a bit of an explore at the exit of Tops. But, yeah, look at this from uh, Fabrice, Pelesny, Pachada, Stefanko, Blazek, Sikora. It's all it's extremely close. It's less than one second between all of these guys. So, uh, uh, meanwhile, up at the front, it looks like Smittle is going to wrap up the championship. But let's ignore that for right now. This is an incredible battle for P2. And this, whoa, hello, Blasek. Whoa, whoa, George, whoa. Oh, nice to see you. My goodness me, uh, uh, Stefanko was a little bit deep coming into uh, coming into Stowe. Oh, and there's Jan Seeker. Stefanko is struggling. But I wonder whether that's tires again because. Oh, and yeah, everybody in the top seven are still on their starting tyres. Yeah, Kostely, Kazanik, Prohaska and Buszek were, I believe, the four that were involved in the first lap scuffle. So they've all changed tyres. Kazanik, not so sure, because he's on the softs now. So he may have to come in again. Oh, speaking of, there he is going a little bit, or locking up into Village. So gone a little bit too deep there. Oh, sideways action from both the Forza car and the Logitech car coming out of the loop and through entry. But, yeah, we still have pit stops that are going to shuffle this order up. And that's going to help someone like uh, Thomas Prohaska in the sport car, who's only a couple of seconds off the back of what we were just looking at. So he's not that far off the back. I, I wondered about that strategy, but that could still come good. And there's Pelesny getting very close to Fabrice side by side. Once again, into Cops. Oh, what a move! He's gone wide, but then so is Frabish. That was beautifully done by the AC car. Was a little wide on the exit, but that was lovely. Pelesny is putting on a show for us. That is, I mean, that's just showing off, let's be honest. You don't, you don't <laughs> you know, need to overtake around the outside of cops. Nobody needs to do that, uh, but he's done it anyway. And it seems that has opened the floodgates as now Pachata looks to go around the outside of Stowe. Uh, on Jan Frabish as well. Can't quite make that work. They are going to be side by side into the braking zone as they get down the hill. A very late braking though for Jan Frabish is going to see him stay ahead of the Thrustmaster in car. And look at the 
away. Pelesny is already starting to break away. They're side by side through that final corner. A bit of a twitch, though, for the Thrustmaster car of Lucas Pachada. Martin Stefanko down in sixth position. Looks on as the uh, Blazek and the Legion car now goes side by side with Pachada. Side by side once again into the heavy braking zone. Up the inside for the Legion car. Stefanko's going to try and get involved in this as well. He'll have to go around the outside now at the loop, and it looks like he's just oh. about going to manage that. And Lucas Pachada has gone for a bit of a spin. Not a full spin, more of a slide than a spin, let's be totally honest. But that is going to lose him tons of time. Yeah, we saw that exact problem happen in the VGB2 race as well. There's too many horses going through potentially overheated tires uh, coming out of the... Well, coming through Aintree, really. So here is this pack, uh, again. well, again being led by Fabris, but now you know, Pelesny's two seconds down the road. You know, putting on a great show in our favourite livery car. We've mentioned that quite a few times as the season's gone on. We've loved that uh, bright mm -hmm. green Acer car. But see, yeah, Stefanko doing what he can to just stay in the midst of the pack. Wow, what it was a great move, though, from Blazek to really get involved in this fight. Fravish, I think, is also struggling on these soft tires. He just doesn't seem to have the pace that he did uh, earlier on. And again, look at the lap times that we've seen. And this is with fighting. So 29.8 for Blazek, 31.5 for Fravish. So uh, that really goes to, to highlight. But he's not coming in. Oh, that goes to Fenko on the outside of Blazek. Oh, that's very close. Yes, it's so risky to make the move into Vale, and that is uh, who's that? Secret. Secret coming in along with uh, uh, Kazani as well. I did think uh, Kazani would need to come in. I think Pratada's either had a well, he's all Pratada have that spin. I wonder if he, I did wonder whether he's going to come in the pits at that point. He doesn't look like he has, but Blazek did a brilliant job to fend off Stefanko. Hey, we, we've remarked many a time about uh, Blazek's defensive prowess. Uh, he really had to put it to the full test because Stefanko was ready to make his day that much worse. Oh, yeah, he got right alongside him. Blazek squeezed him, I think, just enough to be firm but fair. I don't think Blazek yeah. deserves a penalty or anything like that, but he, he squeezed Stefanko just enough to make the Benzina driver uncomfortable, and that, that's exactly what he did. It worked out very well for him. He's going to stay ahead for the meantime, but really what Blazek needs to do is he needs to stop, stop getting on the defensive and get on the offensive. The best thing that he could do for his race at the moment is put a car between himself and Stefanko. I firmly believe in that. Uh, Blazek, I think, if, if I were Blazek's race engineer, and I'm not, uh, but if I were, <laughs> I, I'd be calling him into the pits this lap to just, just to try and get himself ahead of Frabish and hope that maybe Stefanko is going to get caught behind Frabish as uh, Kazanik has picked up a drive through penalty for crossing the line Ooh. at pit exit. That's a that's a big whoops a daisy. That's an unfortunate one. Unfortunate one to have to deal with. But uh, but yeah, if if I were Blazek, I would have pitted this lap try to get himself ahead of Frabish, because again, Frabish seems like the slowest, albeit very marginally, Frabish seems mm. like the slowest out of everybody in that sort of top seven. Well, it's highlighted by the fact that uh, Pelesny is now nearly three seconds down the road. Yep. Uh, after having cleared the Avascar. So yeah, Frabish is struggling a bit more than the rest. Oh, what a shame for Kaznick. The irony is the, the, the natural line out of the pit follows the outside of the track and you've not really got a need to jump over to the left, and there he goes. He is now serving that drive through penalty. Um, that is the rules. That's a you know, real-life rule, so you don't jump into the racing line of others. So he's gone to take the racing line way too early. You don't, uh, you're not forced into kind of jumping across the track from the pit exit, so that's an unfortunate mistake from the Logitech driver. But uh, you know, we've seen how well people push on in the face of adversity, and I'm sure he would do the same as Blazek is very, very close to the back of the Avascar, but still Stefanko hanging on in there, keeping that pressure on. Wouldn't be surprised to see the soft runners coming in in the next few laps. So, of course, our top five, uh, Prichardo, you know, has had that spin and still hasn't come in. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm in agreement with you. If I was advising some of these guys, particularly you know, the likes of Stefanko that seems to be in this, I don't want to say stuck in this, in this pack because he hasn't been trying to make the move, but it does seem that he would have more pace if he wasn't in it. So I, I would have uh, thought, you know, come in, get the undercuts, you know, give him some clean air. And now Pratada comes in. Uh, I, I, I expected him in you know, the lap after he had his spin, but he's opted to go on a little bit more. And now he'll be going on to, I'm assuming he'll go on to mediums. No reason for him to go on to hearts. Oh, that's deep for Blazek. Open the door for Stefanko, but no, he's recovered quick enough before they get down to the loop. And he's going to want a decent drive. Stefanko really looking poised to make a move. Stefanko certainly close enough, but of course, 
Uh, Blasic's going to pick up a bit of slipstream off the Avast car. Oh, Blasic felt the need to defend, though, coming into Brooklands. He wasn't confident that Stavenka wouldn't make the move. But the, as for the moment, they remain as they are. Blazic, uh yeah, he, he needs, he can't be going for moves on Fravish and, and not completing them because that's just going to put, uh, that's going to put Stefanko right onto, onto the back of him. It's just essentially opening the door for the Benzina car behind. So yeah, he really needs to avoid that kind of stuff. However, I think he learned his lesson just then. I, I sure hope <laughs> that he learned his lesson after that failed to overtake attempt on Yen Fravish. But uh, Fravish is doing a fantastic job. As I said, I do believe he is the slowest of sort of the top seven uh, as Schmidl bakes his way into the pits from the lead of the race. Uh, yeah, I, 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 but I should also say Fravish is doing an incredible job. To be able to hold on to, to third position with two cars right behind you like that, oh, now that's an interesting choice from Blazek. I don't think I agree with that. I think Stefanko has done the right thing here. He knows he's quicker than Fravish, and I think Fravish might be slow enough to hold up Blazek, and, and he's good enough at defending to keep Blazek behind. Um, so I think this could work out for Stefanko. He could find himself in a podium position. It's not going to be enough to keep the championship alive, but it's going to be good enough to, you know, just kind of boost his, his ego a little bit. He'll feel good about picking up a podium, considering how this weekend has been going for him so far. Uh, but yeah, I do I don't, I don't agree with this uh, uh, choice from Blazek. Uh, also, I wanted to point out, uh, I wonder how, because, you know, it's not often that we see Blazek uh, uh, going on the offensive like that this uh, that often. Uh, and, and I just wonder if uh, Blazek is thinking to, to himself, is this how it feels when people are stuck behind me? Because, of course, we, we have <laughs> talked about before how good he is at defending. And uh, he's just kind of getting a taste of his own medicine now. Oh, Pelesny is struggling a bit with those tires. He's gone for the overcut it seems uh, and there's the hard shot of Pahaska now up into fourth I knew he gained some time I knew he gained some positions I did quite expect him that far up the field mind you uh, and bear in mind those tyres are probably going to last to the end so yeah, he doesn't have to stop again no he's already changed tyres and those hearts probably will get him to the checker flag is the yeah I thought the ace car would come in Stefanko is surely going to follow suit right behind so expect the pit ball to come up yep. yep there he is so that's going to hand the lead over to this man the Forza car of Kostelik being chased by Prohaska I'd be interested to see the lap times from the sport car of Prohaska at this stage of the race so the mediums have long since come into their operating window the hard will surely be there but of course we'll hold on to it for that much longer so 30.2 for the medium shot Forza car of Kostelik now in the lead of the race oh that's deep coming into village and it's going to allow Prohaska to maintain that gap. Oh, close the end and there was the predator car of Smiddle, so he really hasn't lost a lot. There is Stefanko. Oh, he's going to be right in the midst of a fight. Uh, so Blazek, that you can see directly ahead in the Legion. Oh, God, that's close. As well as the Avast and RPS cars of uh, Fravish and Seeker, uh, respectively. Oh, that is not what Stefanko wanted. He did not need to be in the middle of a fight, but that's exactly what he's got for himself. Exactly right. It's uh, not ideal for him, but he's going to have to make do out with that situation and uh, try to perform his best. Schmidl uh, stays behind Thomas Prohaska, actually, through Cops, and is he going to be stuck behind that spurt car as they make their way through Maggots and Beckets? You know, I think he is. Yeah, he's, he's, I mean, he is very, very quick, but he's not quick enough to just go side by side through the uh, <laughs> through Maggots and Beckets and just quickly make that overtake. I assume he's going to get a good enough chap uh, exit out of Chapel to make that move, and indeed, he'll be to the outside at Stowe is Prosco late enough on the brakes to force him to continue no he's, he's already gotten the position and uh, Kostulik unsurprisingly coming into the pits I would have I would have uh, guessed one more lap maybe for Kostulik before Same. switching on to the soft compound tires but uh, he's into the pits already he's going to get rid of that set of mediums and Michael Schmidl regains the lead of the race with uh, Thomas Prohaska essentially moving up into second position now and again he does not need to stop he's got a pretty sizable gap to Bushek behind and I just wonder if uh, if he's going to be able to maintain that gap, if he's going to be able to maintain that position. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm excited about the possibilities here. Yeah, definitely. He's got a fair old way to go, though, as we are still just over 19 minutes plus a lap still to do in this feature race. So that, you know, Prohaska's work is not done by a long shot. Just like the RPS car, Seeker has got a lot of friends here with uh, Fravish, Blazek and Stefanko all in hot pursuit right behind and there is the Acer car of Pelesny only a couple of seconds down the road 
So this pack looks set to continue this fight. Ooh, that's just two different lines going through Brooklyn. It looks like I thought the Avast was going a little bit deep. I think it's just two different uh, ways of taking that particular turn. Oh, he looks deep, though, coming off of Luffield. That's going to put Blasik right on his case. Oh, ho, ho. that was firm but fair. Almost squeezing him into the wall. He's had to relinquish that spot, though. Nearly as uh, impact as the, as the Avast comes back on track. And nicely done. Blasik was not prepared to let that go. He did not give up on that move at all. Was not phased. I certainly would have been. Uh, if I think being pushed that close to the wall. Oh, Easter Fink are going to make a move on Frabish as well, side by side as they come up to Stowe once again. Can he get the move done? No, the Avaskar manages to defend it. Brilliantly oh, driven. That was incredible from Jan Frabish, oh. actually. No, it looks like it's not going to work out this time, though. But again, actually, he's made that work. Uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if uh, Frabish and Blazek have actually swapped bodies for this race or something, but <laughs> this is unbelievable defending we've seen from Ian Frabish. In the end, I don't think it is going to be enough, surely, with the inside line. Uh, that's going to be enough for Stefanko. Nope, I was wrong. The Avascar coming back at him. Again, the inside line for Stefanko. He'll have to be to the outside through the loop, but actually, Frabish retakes that position for the meantime. He's gone a bit deep into that corner. That could give Stefanko the drive that he needs as he makes his way through Aintree. Can he get the inside line through? No, it looks like uh, Frabish is going to defend that, but with the overspeed, Stefanko could go ahead. If he's late enough on the brakes, he could stick it around the outside, get the inside line through Luffield. Frabish, though, wow. with the advantage, maintains that position. Stefanko coming back at him with the inside line through Luffield. Is going to get him, I think, at the exit. Inside line through Woodcut now for Stefanko. I think he's just about going to pull ahead of Jan Frabish, but Frabish is not giving up. Stefanko feels the need to go defensive into cups, but surely, surely he'll get it done there. He does indeed. Martin Stefanko moves himself up into what is currently seventh position and finally gets ahead of Jan Frabish, but again, I, I gotta say, Frabish possibly solid contender for driver of the day. I, I gotta give it to maybe Pelesny, uh, Prohaska, depending on how things go for him, but oh, now now just everybody is overtaking Jan Frabish as uh, <laughs> Lucas Pachada in the Thrustmaster car is gonna look to go around the outside at Stowe. It didn't work out last time for him, but yeah, Frabish continues to drop down. Again, I, 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 I gotta give it to Jan Frabish, though. He wasn't the quickest driver out there today, but what a defensive drive from him. It was, I mean, that was really impressive to watch. It certainly was. He was not prepared to give up at all. You could easily have seen that move being kind of concluded by one of the drivers backing off several times throughout the entire movement, and neither of them did. No impact, brilliantly driven, very respectful, loved every second of it. Sikra still under pressure from Blasek. We saw Blasek make a bit of a mistake and drop off the back of the RPS car whilst we were concentrating on that fantastic battle with Frabish. Pachado just shot through as uh, Frabish was uh, a little bit slow off of one of the last few turns on board with the Legion car of Blasek as he continues to hound Jan Sikra as they come out of Luffield. Sikra going a little bit early to the uh, apex there. He's not defending against anybody. Blasek getting a bit of a slipstream. He's going to catch the RPS car at the wrong time. He's had the back out of that. We saw Stefanko doing that a few laps ago. So, yeah, he, he knew that he was, wasn't was going to catch him at the right time and it was just going to be dangerous to try and move. So he's backed off. He wants to try and get a decent exit out of Chapel, but he he's, was too greedy on the throttle through Maggots and Beckett. That's cost him that all-crucial momentum to go after the RPS car. Stefanko just uh, watches on wait for his opportunity. The lead to Carlos quite squarely actually coming through Stowe, but we'll see if uh, he's able to keep his car under control. And we've seen how well these tyres let go when they're pushed a little bit too hard. And again, look at the leader card. It looks absolutely all over the place. Last time we saw, I uh, think it was Kazanik that, that uh, lost control of his car after it getting exceedingly lively like that. And we know how that ended up. Yeah, exactly right. Oh, side by side. There we go. Around the outside for Blazek in the Legion car. Oh, uh, that's some intense defending for Jan Seeker. And that's actually going to allow Stefanko to go through. He's got a great run through the loop, through Aintree. He could be making a double overtake here. He's very close to the back of the Legion car. Michael Blazek, who defends the inside line on the run into uh, into the next left-hander there at Brooklyn's. And no, he can't quite go around the outside. Cam Martin Stefanko. And no, he is going to slot ahead of the RPS car, but behind the Legion car, so that is two positions lost for Yan Sikora after what has been a, uh, a a very exciting day for him as well too. Frabish, Pachada, Sikora, Stefanko, Blazek, all of these guys having a very exciting race today out here for the VGP1 feature race in the 2019 Mercedes-Benz VGP season. 
really incredible stuff, and these guys are uh, giving it their all. Less than 15 minutes remaining already in this race. It is absolutely flown by, and I have noticed that Pelesny is catching up to Thomas Prochaska at quite a rate of knots, but look at the gap between Pelesny and Blazek at the moment, and with all the battling that these guys are doing, I, you know, I'm, I'm really pulling for a Prochaska podium here today. Yeah. Um, I, I can't see he's going to hang on to second, but no, he's no, not. easily ahead. Uh, you know, it's plenty enough ahead of this particular fight, unless uh, something disastrous, disastrous goes wrong for the sport car. I, I hope I haven't just cursed him by saying that. But we will see. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think Thomas Prohaska is in a great shape to stay on one of those three steps. I, I suspect he's going to be third the way that Polesny is reeling him in. And so we look at Stefanko, the RPS car, and Thrustmaster car behind them getting very, very close. Stefanko, well, that was such a great move last lap coming out of the loop to try and overtake both Frabish and, uh, and Blazek in the same move. That was absolutely fantastic from Stefanko. Couldn't quite get it done, but Prichada uh, on a bit of a recovery drive after earlier problems on the back of the uh, RPS car and Frabish has fallen to the back of the entire field sadly of oh, the entire train of this particular train unfortunately so his troubles seem to be continuing and there is Prohaska now being chased by Pelesny I can't really see this going in Prohaska's uh, favour as uh, well you can see from the last laps there the, the Pelesny 2.4 seconds quicker than uh, Prohaska it doesn't make the move. I would be surprised if the sport car really fought that one too hard. Again, you, you must realistically know that the ace car has just been that much quicker at this particular point. But we'll see. Presley just needs to kind of make the move. And he should be able to make it stick out of thought as they come through Abbey Farm down to Village once again. Still no movement from the ace car. On board with him now as we come through. AG, maybe he's just Pelesny taking his time, wanting to do it safely and properly. They're surely going to be into Brooklyn's in the slipstream. Out it, oh, it looked like Prohaska was looking to defend it. I think he's he's going to get that up. Yeah, but he was uh, intentionally wide coming through Brooklyn's. Oh, that's side by side. That's Prichada and Sikara coming into the very same spot that we've just been looking at into Brooklyn's, into Luffield. And the RPS car nicely defended. It's, we see some excellent, excellent defensive driving today. Unbelievable side-by-side -side stuff. Really incredible. I, I, absolutely enjoying it. Uh, I'm surprised. I'm actually. I would expect Prohaska is glad to be overtaken into Brooklyn's because he would have gotten a bit of a slipstream effect uh, after coming out of Love Field and going through the uh, Woodcut and onto the Old Start Finish straight. You know he. As you said, it was always going to happen, uh, but if he gets overtaken in in one spot versus another, it can be more or less beneficial for him. And I think that was probably the best place to be overtaken because he can pick up a little bit of a slipstream and get a few tenths of a second anyway further up the road compared to uh, Blazek, Stefanko, all of these guys that are battling for fourth position at the moment. I will say that they are starting to close up on Prohaska quite a bit. That gap has come down pretty significantly between Prohaska and Blazek. So uh, Pro uh, Prohaska at this point is probably hoping that Stefanko and Blazek will start battling one another, uh, mm. which is uh, certainly possible. We're on board with Pichata as he looks to continue the battle with Sikora. Frabish, interestingly enough, still right behind. So, you know, he, he again uh, was the slowest, I thought, out of everybody in, sort of in that midfield battle. But after being overtaken, he's still keeping up to the back of Sikora and Pichata. So uh, who knows, maybe he'll spring something right at the end. Well, it's, it's Silverson is full of surprises for VTP. Oh, is it going to be a move on the outside for Pichata? No, can't hang on to that. That's uh, keeping Frabish very much in check, exactly as you were just saying. Uh, Pichata is going to have to stay in line as he could go straight for that defensive line. Lovely drive from the exit of Luffield for the RPS car. Uh, Stefanko, he's caught up to Blazek then in the Legion car. Uh, see what he's able to do. He timed his attack pretty well last time. He comes through Maggots and Beckett's. Nothing really going to happen here. Now the exit of Chapel. No, he's too far back to uh, make a move, as we saw in the background. The Avaska. Uh, oh, there was the distinctive AC car that just went through the shot. Yeah, Prohaska's being reeled in by these two. There is Thomas Prohaska. So those, perhaps the uh, hard shot uh, strategy not going as well as we thought it would. As he's really lost a lot of pace now. 
I'm surprised. I thought those uh, hard tyres would see him through. Maybe he's going to ditch them uh, as the race continues. Or oh, he's just trying to preserve them to make sure he gets to the end. Who knows? Only he really knows that one. But that has enabled a four-way battle uh, for, or certainly a three-way battle for that last podium spot. Prochado continues to chase uh, Jan Sikora with Jan Fravich in hot pursuit. So once again, we've got several battles providing some excellent, excellent racing. Yep, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I think you're right. Praska is about to lose that position right now, I do believe, as uh, Blazek has closed right up to the back of that spurt car. And indeed, he has managed to make the overtake. And it looks like Tefenko is going to do the oh. exact same thing at the exit of Luffield. Makes it look rather easy. No surprise there. Uh, but again, I think Praska probably knew that was coming. And at this point, he's probably just hoping to consolidate fifth position. It's still a pretty sizable gap down to Sikora, Pachata, and Fravish. But if all three of those guys catch him, I think all three of those guys are going to overtake him. So uh, this really is uh, the, the deciding moments now over the course of the next eight minutes plus one lap for Thomas Prohaska to see if he can keep himself in the top five or if he's going to drop down to eighth position. Because if Sikora catches him, then that means Pachada's caught him and that means Fravish has caught him as well too. So uh, he's certainly going to have to think about that. Again, he might be given a little bit of a break if these guys start battling one another. Uh, you can see Lucas Pachada getting very, very close to the back of the RPS car. Sikora going defensive into the penultimate corner there, but uh, no side-by-side -side moments between the two of them. He is going to lose a little bit of time by going defensive there. Uh, but yeah, Prohaska still potentially could be on for a top five finish, but I don't know. I don't know now. The way Blazek and Stefanko caught up to him that quickly makes me worry for him now. Yeah, not going to make another prediction because that one's going to hurt me wrong. No, of course we will because that's what we commentators do. But yeah, it's it's a shame. And I think we're too late in the race for Prohaska to really to come in and change tyres for that to be uh, yeah for that to be successful. We haven't uh, another ten minutes on the race perhaps. As a Pachada has a thing about an outside move into Brooklyn, it's not close enough for that. And again, he's got Fravish behind him, so he can't concentrate too much on the RPS car. But we will see if he gets very close in the exit of the left field. Through Woodcut. He's going to be too close again, unless he wants to go side by side through Cops. Oh, nicely parked in the middle of the road for Secret. That's put Pachada off. He's gone wide there, but he's lost a little bit of time, but nothing too much. Again, excellent driving from both Sikora and Pachada. Stefanko is very close to Blazek as well, so that battle for the last podium spot is continuing to, continuing to rage on. As Pachado again, he's going to size up a move on Sikora coming into uh, Stowe. No, he's a little bit too far back. The RPS car a little deep. Nothing too bad. Because this is exactly what Prohaska wants. He wants these three to really scrap and slow each other down. Oh, big move from Fravish. Whether he missed his breaking point or whether he was going for the lunge, uh, well, I think he was actually, that was an attempt at a move because it looked like he slowed it down enough. He wasn't locking up or frantically running off the road. Mm -hmm. Excellent effort for Frabich. Is he now going to start pushing in the uh, final five minutes? And that could be exactly what Prohaska needs as uh, Pachada now is going to have to defend the inside line against that Avasco. Fravish shoots around the outside. They'll give him the inside line now through this left-hander. And I think that's the job done. It is indeed mistaken that position as they come on to the Wellington straight now. But let's see if Pachada has had a good enough exit to try and retake that position. Fravish defends the inside line into Brooklyn's. The Thrustmaster car looks to go around the outside, which will become the inside line for Luffield. But no, Fravish gives him a bit of a squeeze. He's gone uh, deep into the corner though. Meanwhile, turning our attention to Stefanko and Blazek. Stefanko getting very close as they make their way through Cops side by side now for the Thrustmaster to Vascar's inside line for Pachata and surely that's going to be enough for him to defend that position or retake that position, I should say. He moves himself back up into seventh and that's great news for not just uh, uh, Prohaska but also for Sikora as well too. So Sikora has managed to build a little bit of a gap between Pachata and Fravish as a result of that duel. Very nicely driven once again. <laughs> the camera the camera operators are having a hell of a time knowing which fight to look at. It's a good problem to have. Uh, it's certainly something that uh, myself and Justin are very familiar with from when we have to control the cameras and figure out who we're going to shout about. But uh, Stefanko has been right there looming in Blagic's mirrors for a long, long time. He's not got too long left to make the move and Blagic's not got left to defend it as well. All the points are valuable. Oh, a bit of a lockup for Blasek, but Stefanko couldn't capitalize on it. Coming through Village into the loop once again, and that's Prohaska trying to defend against uh, Prochado. He can't get it done. It looks like there's nothing really left in the tires for Prohaska. He surely he's going to lose that. Oh, he's almost he almost lost that position already. 
to Frabish and I think that was a fairly foregone conclusion before they get to Brooklyn's again. Oh, what a shame for the spot guy. It was looking so good, but alas, the strategy is just not paying off for him. Oh, no, and he's gone off the road. There was a bit of impact between himself and the Avast car. I think he tried to turn in a tad too early and Frabish was still there, so that's going to make it even worse. That's actually going to throw him potentially into the clutches of Costa League. Yeah, Kostulik on those soft tires as well, so that's going to be an even bigger pace deficit for the Spurt driver as the Forza car on those uh, relatively fresh, soft compound tires. But, <coughs> excuse me, Stefanko onto the back of Blazek now. Uh, we're very, very close once again, but again, Blazek just doing everything that he needs to do to stay ahead of the Benzina driver, and I mean, you know, we, we've said before, Schmidl doing Schmidl things, this is Blazek doing Blazek things. I mean, he is, uh, this is why we've oftentimes said that he is, you know, the defensive master of virtual GP. Uh, he, he never seems to have quite, you know, the one lap pace in order to be winning races and stuff. Uh, but he seems to be really good on the strategy and figuring things out in qualifying and that sort of stuff. And he just puts himself in a position where he can pick up these podiums and, and just defends over and over. And look at him. Look at him in the bottom left corner. He looks completely composed. I mean, Stavanko does too. But I mean, if I had Martin Stavanko bringing me down my neck like that, I would look a lot more worried than Michael Blazek looks right now. Yeah, I'd be pouring with sweat. I'd be, you know, look of fear in my face. Yeah, abs and yeah, Blazek, again, we, we kind of mentioned the, the, the focus versus the relaxed. I'm not saying that necessarily Stefanko isn't relaxed, nor that uh, Blazek isn't focused. It's just the way that they look right now. He's got time to, you know, you know uh, scratch his eye. He's just, he's not putting any kind of wild, erratic steering movements in. He's very smooth. He actually looks like he's, barely, he's putting barely any steering movements in. I think it's just the angle of the camera more than anything else. But Stefanko's just got that absolute steel face look he's always had when he is uh, focused and ready for the dog. And it just looks like Blazek has always had the answer. No matter what Stefanko's thrown at him, Blazek has had the answer ready to deploy. There hasn't been any kind of panic movements. Uh, I think Stefanko may have to kind of spring a surprise on him, but even then it does look like Blazek is well in control of that last podium spot. Whoa. Oops, <laughs> is that, uh, is that's Frabish going for a bit of a wonder on the outside of Stowe. Prodada still putting the uh, pressure on Sikora. Here we go again. The battle for third. And there's Stefanko having a think about it on the inside of Village. He's going to have to do something like that to, to kind of catch the Legion car off guard to try and take that third position, I think. I think you're right about that. And there is going to be two more laps for these guys. Uh, just looking at the gaps and trying to work out where Schmidl is. He is going to come back around one more time. Uh, before the timer hits zero, and then he's going to have one more lap on top of that. So there should be two remaining laps here for Martin Stefanko to get past uh, Michael Blazek. That's not a whole lot of time, uh, not a whole lot of opportunities, but, uh, you know, it certainly could be worse as Pachada uh, getting very close to the back of Seeker, looking to the outside of Luffield. Again, we've talked about how difficult it is to go around the outside of Luffield. He seems to have that grip, though. Seems to have much more grip in that Thrustmaster car as a... Uh, whoa! What? Where is, where's Blazek? Where's he gone? Where, where has Blazek gone? Oh, oh there he is. He's been wow. off, and it looks like at the exit of Cops. Uh, I, would I wouldn't I would expect there was contact between the two of them, knowing what kind of driver Martin Stefanko is. So I would assume Blazek has just uh, spun it on his own, possibly got onto the curb at the exit of Cops a little bit too much. Uh, but look at this. That has dropped him right into this battle with Sikra, Pachata, and Frabish. So uh, this three-way battle uh, for what was uh, fifth position has now become a four-way battle for fourth position. Well, there went the, uh, the announcers I was giving. Oh, Frimish! Is he going to try and take both of them? What? Oh, my goodness. Oh, what a move from Prachada as well to demote the Avascar back down to the, the tail of this group. And now Frabish is going to try and attack back as the white flag is now out awaiting Smiddle. Oh, near the impact between the Thrustmaster and the Vascars. Here comes Frabish again, inside line for Village. Can he get it slowed down just about? Well, suddenly he's come alive. And yeah, as you say, that's dropped Blasek right into the clutches of Jan Suker. We just got him go through the shot. I, I, I can't imagine there was impact there. We didn't see it on the camera, but it's highly unlikely. Just, I wonder whether Stefanko just pulled that surprise move exactly as I thought he would, or thought he would have to, to su su surprise Blazek into a move he wasn't expecting, and that could well have uh, caused him into a bit of a spin. But the white flag doth await the Predator car once again. A huge gap is uh, behind him. No penalties we are aware of for Michael Smith. Final lap 
here at Silverstone and the championship is looking set to travel to Michael Smiddle once again. Yep, it is, uh, it is looking that way. Another VGP championship for Michael Schmidl in 2019. And uh, I imagine he's going to be absolutely thrilled about that. Some fantastic prizes on offer. And he's going to be absolutely thrilled about wrapping this up after 12 out of the 13 rounds that we've had. But one, one lap still remains for this, uh, this battle here. As uh, Sikra, the car ahead of Fravish Pachata, not that far behind, only recently getting overtaken by Fravish, uh, probably going to be looking to uh, uh, get himself involved in that as well. He, he probably sees this as an opportunity to gain two positions, not just one. So I would imagine Pachata is going to be pushing very hard. Uh, Prohaska, interestingly enough, is still ahead of Bushek. Bushek's gotten ahead of Kostulik, interestingly enough, on that set of super soft compound tires. So we'll see if Prohaska can hold on to that eighth place after what was a very difficult race for him let's be honest that would still be a huge result even though we thought maybe he was going to be on for a podium or a top five or something again he, he dropped right down to the to the back at, on, on the uh, opening lap after the incident so uh, but it is all about Michael Schmidl who is going to pick up the win here in this in Silverstone for the feature race this win is going to be enough to make him the champion of the 2019 Mercedes-Benz Virtual GP Championship. And he crosses the line. It's another win. It's another championship for Michael Schmidl in the Predator car. And you can see he is just so thrilled about that. He shakes his fist. Oh, man, he's probably very sweaty. Yeah, you can see the exhaustion in his face as well, too. Pelesny, I think, with a fantastic drive, possibly my driver of the day. Pelesny really drove out of his skin on that one to get second position. Stefanko, uh, another podium just to add to his tally. Uh, a fantastic drive. Probably, again, you know, he's been retained by the Haas F1 team for the 2019 F1 Esports Pro Series season. So, uh, you know, maybe his, his focus has been a little bit more on that than it has been on VGP. But nonetheless, he picks up a podium. And in the end, and look at this nose to tail it's the rps the avast and the thrustmaster cars it's sikra it's frabish it's pachata in fifth sixth and seventh position and in the end i think prohaska is indeed going to hold on to that eighth place finish which would be incredible for him in the end and look at that we're gonna we're even gonna get some donuts from michael schmidl and he has earned it oh, hasn't he just flawless performances throughout the entire season very few people have stood in the top spot, and primarily it has been him. Wow. Well, what a race. Michael Schmidl claims the win. Pelesny in second. Stefanko in third. Three guys that have been on the podium plenty of times. So just a confirmation, it is Michael Schmidl by 17 seconds in the end. A fairly dominant win for the newly crowned champion. Martin Stefanko in third. Just seven seconds behind Pelesny, actually. It wasn't as big of a gap as I expected, but then a huge gap of 14 seconds down to Michael Blazek in fourth. Fravish rounding out the top five, barely finishing ahead of Pachada in that incredible close battle and there is the confirmation Michael Smittle leads the championship he wins the championship with 212 points after 12 races Martin Stefanko holds on to second place but he's only five points ahead of Pelesny it's very very close between the two of them Blazek sort of uh, in no man's land with 123 points a fairly sizable gap ahead and an even bigger gap behind in the team's championship Acer with 312 points a massive lead over Logitech who sits in second position Predator only one point behind behind with only one race still to go and only 12 points down to Benzina and then a pretty sizable gap of nearly 40 points down to Thrustmaster in fifth position. That's going to do it for round 12. Thanks to Chris Buxton for joining me and the entire VGP team and all of the drivers for everything that they do. We'll be back next time for round 13 in the final race of the season at the four games event. We'll see you then.